So we're uh, running some numbers right now. Uh, the debt markets and the capital flows are uh, much more opaque in Europe than, say, here in the States. Uh, but no doubt, the uh, European banks, particularly some of the German banks, were very active lenders in the UK. Uh, and you know, conversely, some other UK-based banks were active on the continent uh, with their clients. Uh, and sorting out how that set of uh, flows is going to uh, affect the market as well as the equity flows is uh, uh, an important aspect. Uh, certainly, I think it's, you know, uh, well, you know, for a bank that's making a, a five-year or seven-year loan, they need to anticipate it now when they make it. Even, you know, the two-year window is, you know, still got to be considered. So, yeah, I, no, I was just going to say, uh, so, again, trying to view it as an opportunity, uh, in the U.S., there's a pretty well-developed uh, shadow banking market, or whatever you want to call it, private lenders, private funds geared towards uh, lending both on stabilized assets and transitional assets. Uh, I think it's a little bit less developed in Europe, and maybe that's another big opportunity. I mean, there's certainly... It has been growing, and yeah. definitely, you know, and I will say, just, you know, this dislocation of the debt markets, the dislocation and uh, all the markets, uh, there's one thing to say, they're, uh, you know, all the big private equity funds that are, you know, thrive off of dislocation and aren't afraid to make risks. Uh, you know, have built up huge staffs in London for Europe, you know, buying up distressed debt. Uh, for the most part, they were starting to look for what's next. Uh, and so they will, you know, it's just, I don't think there's going to be a question of liquidity, it's going to be more of a question of pricing. I mean, exactly right. I think, you know, prior to Brexit, the, the, the actual vote, there was a, a, a lot of money sitting on the sidelines waiting and that was a lot of equity, and that money hasn't gone away. That money is looking for, you know, yield, essentially. Um, and, you know, real estate relative to, to equities and bonds still offers that high, relatively high yield in this in trading environment. So, you know, it is all about price. And um, the question is, and we, it's yet to be determined, what sort of a discount do people expect given what's happened recently. Um, but I think it will clear, given that there's you know, a lot of demand still with the amount of money sitting there. So the, 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 the fall might not be as much as people expect it to be, because there's always going to be someone there to, to come in. To um, come to your question specifically, I mean, it was a very pertinent question. Um, and I think it's not right to say the lending market, which you didn't, but um, some of the answers I think were a little bit too general. I think we have to understand two steps. There were specific alternative lenders that have raised pound funds for specific lending strategies. They raised pounds and they will lend pounds, no change. Secondly, there are the um, established lenders that are UK denominated based, have UK deposits and trade very su successfully in the UK interbank market. I don't expect much change there either. And then you have um, overseas banks who have a balance sheet denominated in a different currency, and that's where your question will be very interesting, because the United Kingdom has in continental Europe, I mean in Europe, not continental, in Europe, the most um, interesting from a return perspective market, it though suffers from the hedging cost between pound and euro. So it will depend on the volatility between those two currencies, how banks can offset that. 